Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. But the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. When the workers of iniquity exalted the word of God above the Most High, the Creator, his purpose was lost. Instead of the word of God doing what the Most High, the Father, sent him to do, religion made the word of God the Father in the flesh. Religion have turned the truth into a lie. In addition, the synagogue of Satan have indoctrinated the people to worship and exalt the creature more than the Creator. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. There are a lot of scriptures in the Bible that exposes the evil the workers of iniquity have done to the scriptures. Too many Israelites overlook those scriptures. For example, the verse in the book of Romans we just heard, chapter 1, verse 25, said that they transformed the truth into a lie. Did you notice the scripture said, truth? The scriptures didn't say anything about doctrine. The synagogue of Satan have transformed the truth of the Most High into a lie. Before we dissect the first half of the verse, what truth have religious leaders taught the people in their temples of sin? So far, every doctrine coming from the pulpits of the disciples of Satan have been lies. The scripture said Satan is a liar and a father of lies. The scriptures went on to say that when he speak a lie, he is speaking his native language. Satan's ministers are incapable of speaking truth. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The fact that there are some Israelites following every doctrine taught to them by the workers of iniquity and religion is a disgrace. Israelites, the workers of iniquity have made a covenant with death. Satan's ministers have made an agreement with hell to deceive. The synagogue of Satan have made lies their refuge. They rest in their lies. They hide in their falsehoods. That is why the truth the Most High is making available at this time is exposing their hiding places. That is why they must censor channels like this. If the workers of iniquity don't censor, they cannot rest nor find refuge in their lies. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we at agreement when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. When Satan and his ministers speak, know that they are speaking their native language, which are lies. The scriptures say they hide behind their falsehoods. The time has come for Israelites to realize that there is no truth in them. The doctrines you have heard the heathens preach for multiple generations and many of you have accepted as truth are lies. The Satans and their followers cannot speak truth. They cannot stand in the presence of what is good. That is why they must flee in the presence of righteousness. The truth of the Most High's words is a sword that would destroy them. When light shines into a dark room, it exposes everything that was hiding. Israelites, that is why light have nothing in common with darkness. You cannot be a child of the Most High and share the same belief with the synagogue of Satan that made a covenant to deceive you. Two people cannot walk together unless they agree. Can two walk together except they be agreed? If you accept their doctrines that is rooted in falsehood as the truth of the Most High's words, you have been deceived. 
Israelites, the Most High didn't call you out of darkness into his glorious light if you were in the truth. Know that everything the synagogue of Satan have taught you in religion are lies. There is no truth in them. They use the very scriptures you trust to deceive you. That is why the Most High said the hour has come and now is when the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Many people overlook the truth and focus on spirit. You can't serve the Most High in the spirit without the truth. So many people claim to be spiritual, yet they lack wisdom and understanding of the scriptures. Their knowledge is based solely on what was taught to them in religion. Because so many Israelites fail to find the truth, they perish. In addition to the Most High saying we must worship in spirit and in truth, the Comforter, the Messiah prayed to the Father to send after his departure will guide us into all truth. The Comforter will not speak on his own accord, but by what he hears from the Most High, that is what he will speak. The very Comforter, that is the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Truth, will tell you the truth and reveal to you everything you need to know. Albeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Israelites, the time has come for you to trust the Holy Spirit, the Most High sent that abide with you. That is how you will know the truth. If you rely on the church and the various religious faith the Satans have created to compete with spirituality, you will end up on the broad road that leads to destruction. Satan have deceived many Israelites in the false awakening who believe they are all knowing and full of pride. Satan made them believe the truth the Most High is making available at this time are lies. That is why they are ready to defend and uphold the false doctrines. They respond exactly like how the one they follow have taught them. They become offended and begin to slander, hate you and make up lies about you. Majority of them don't even realize they are fulfilling the scriptures. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. In the very scriptures, so many people say they study and read said that they would do this and majority of them failed to see the role they are playing in the last days. The God of this world whom they serve have blinded their minds that they cannot see the truth in the sealed scriptures. Without the Holy Spirit, they will force the scriptures to say what they want instead of allowing the scriptures to speak. Many who have accepted religious doctrines as truth are doing exactly what the book of Isaiah said. They have accepted evil for good and call good evil. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now that you know the Satan's and the synagogue of Satan's native language is lies, now that you know the workers of iniquity hide behind their falsehoods, I hope you can now understand why the workers of iniquity fight against the remnant seeking the face of the Father in the real awakening. The verse in the book of Romans said they transformed the truth into a lie. They have altered the word of the Most High and created religion to get many to worship and accepted the God of this world as their Lord and Savior, transforming the truth of the words of the Most High into a lie. The verse in the book of Roman went on to say that the people would worship the creature more than the creator. Who is the most worshipped creature in this world? Every religious faith had their own version of the God of this world. Despite knowing that the Messiah was sent by the Father to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as well as giving an opportunity to all the righteous who follow and uphold the laws of the Most High, most people don't know the one who sent him. They worship and serve the one that came in the flesh, fulfilling what is written in the very scriptures in the book of Roman. They worship the creature more than the creator. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Some people want to debate or argue about the scriptures. However, the scripture is very clear. 
the synagogue of Satan transformed the truth into a lie and made the majority of the world's population worship the creature more than the creator. Who is the most popular God in this world? The Most High said, the world hates him. Who's the popular God majority of people mistake for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The scriptures in the book of John said, if the world hates you, know that it hated me first. The world hate the Most High. How is that majority of the world is serving him in the beast system? In addition, the world still hate his people that are made in his image. Israelites, the time has come for you to use discernment. Let go of the lies taught to you in the beast religion. Allow the scriptures to speak on its own. None of the doctrines taught to you in religion could be verified in the scriptures. Despite of all the alterations they have done to the scriptures, none of their doctrines can be confirmed by the scriptures. The comforter whom the Most High sent speak nothing but the truth. That is why in the last days, our knowledge will increase and the truth of the words of the Most High will be taught in all the kingdoms of this world. Social media is the gateway for the tribes that are scattered to the most remote places in this world will hear the truth of the Most High's words and return to the Father. But if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, Yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. From the time of Adam until the word of God became flesh, the Most High was reconciling his creation back to him. Once the word of God became flesh and fulfilled his mission, the reconciliation was complete. The generations alive after the word of God return to the Father, their purpose is to repent, return to serve the Father, until the word of God return to destroy the kings of the earth and judge the wicked. For multiple generations, the Most High has been crying out to his people to return to him. The scriptures prophesied about a time when the Israelites will realize their error in serving other gods and they will start to return to serve the Most High, the Father. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their captivities they shall remember themselves. And it shall come to pass, for all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee, the prophecy of the Israelites starting to remember themselves and returning to the Father is taking place right now. The awakening is about the Israelites returning to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. Because religion has a stronghold on the minds of many Israelites and the other nations that came from the seed of Adam. The high-level workers of iniquity that controlled the indigenous black people through religion made the people focus on the time period when the word of God became flesh. Because so many people are constantly looking back to that period of time, they cannot see what is happening right in front of them. The spirit of backwardness is keeping the people from seeing what is happening presently. Due to the spirit of backwardness having access to the people through religion, many Israelites haven't come to terms with Joshua ben Joseph, most of you know him as Yahshua, returning to his original role of being the word of God. Whenever a person speak on the word of God in this generation, they refer to him as Yahshua. Israelites, the time has come for you to focus on today instead of looking back to a time period that happened over 2,000 years ago. The word of God completed his mission as Joshua ben Joseph. Yahshua said to you in the scriptures, he came to fulfill everything written about him. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled 
which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. When Yahshua was hanged on a tree and took the keys of hell from the Satans, Adam was redeemed. Remember, Adam said when the word of God comes and suffer in the place where his body is laid, his salvation will come and his kingdom will be restored. The crown on my head shall be baptized with his blood, and then shall my salvation be wrought, and he shall restore me to my kingdom, and shall give me my priesthood and my gift of prophecy. Then the voice was silent by the power of God. To those of you who don't know the word of God and only know him as Yahshua, it will be difficult for you to transition with the many roles he play in our journey to redemption. The word of God already fulfilled his mission as Joshua ben Joseph. Many of you need to catch up and see him for who he is today. Joshua ben Joseph, the one you know as Yahshua, returned back to his position as the word of God. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. A great majority of you only know the word of God as Joshua ben Joseph. Even the name Joshua ben Joseph is foreign to some of you. The word of God have many names in the scriptures, just as Satan have many names in the scriptures. Throughout history, our name have changed multiple times as well. Whenever the Most High call you to a purpose, he often change your name. The new name given usually match your purpose or character. For example, when the Most High made Abram a father to many nations, the Most High changed his name to Abraham. His wife Sarai, the Most High changed her name to Sarah and made her a mother to many nations. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her, yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings of people shall be of her. We see repeatedly in the scriptures of the Most High changing the names of the people he called. Their names corresponds with their mission. The Most High changed our father Jacob's name to Israel. Jacob became Israel when the Most High made him the progenitor to the Israelite bloodline. Israelites know that a person may have many names in the scriptures. Just as the fallen angel majority of you know as Satan. The scriptures refer to him as Lucifer, Devil, Satanel, Gadriel, and Samuel are some of his names. The title, Word of God, given to the Spirit, the scripture said, was the firstborn to all creation, and the image to the invisible God is not the given name to the firstborn. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. Before I go any further, let us dissect the scriptures you just heard in Colossians. I want to point out that during this time, the word of God was Joshua ben Joseph. The scripture said he is the firstborn of every creature. The word firstborn is not a very good word to use. The scribes should have translated that word to create it. Adam was the first of our kind to be created. Cain is the first man born. Adam and Eve were created. The rest of us that came from them were born through our mother's womb. The scriptures should have said the word of God is the first spirit the most high created. The scriptures in Colossians refer to the Messiah as the firstborn of all creatures. The scriptures is letting us know that the Messiah is a created being. Remember, the most high the father is the creator. There was never a time he didn't exist. That is why the Messiah cannot be the most high the father in the flesh. Let the scripture speak. Don't add personal opinions, just let the scripture speak. 
The word of God is a title used to replace the name of the first creature, the most high created, also to conceal him in the scriptures. Michael is the other name we see in the scriptures for the same spirit that is called the word of God. The name Michael means the one who is like God. When the word of God became flesh, he was Joshua ben Joseph. Joshua said to Philip, if you see me, then you have seen the father. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Michael, which means one who is like God, corresponds with the scriptures of the Messiah saying, the father and him are one, just like the meaning to his given name. The Most High often change your name to match your character and your mission. Because the scriptures refer to the Messiah as the word of God before he became flesh, I will refer to him as such to help you understand the message. Many of you know the word of God as Yahshua when he became flesh. Yahshua is no longer flesh. He returned to the Father and resumed his role as the firstborn of all creation. In the message I did about the earth is groaning, I said to you, everything the Most High created are living. Even the dirt many of you trample under your feet is alive. That is how the dirt is able to grow food, plants, and trees. The Word of God used dirt to create Adam. In addition to everything the Most High created are living, you also need to understand that everything the Most High created are spirits. There are disembodied spirits, there are unclean spirits, and righteous spirits. The angels are spirits, and we are spirits as well. Your spirit is housed in the human suit you obtain in your mother's womb. The scriptures refer to wisdom as a feminine spirit. Wisdom found no place where she might dwell. Then a dwelling place was assigned her in the heavens. Wisdom went forth to make her dwelling among the children of men and found no dwelling place. Wisdom returned to her place and took her seat among the angels. When a person used the carnal mind, the flesh, to understand what is spiritual, they will never understand the truth. They will view the spirit of wisdom as a personality trait, just as many people view an illness as a sickness that harmed the body. In reality, every illness or disease are spirits. The scriptures refer to every spirit of illness plaguing your body as the spirit of infirmity. When the people view spirits as personality traits, they will never get to the root of the problem. They will treat the surface and never deal with the root. The root cause to majority of your life problems are the results of unclean spirits attacking you. Your sins open the door to unclean spirits. Sorcery and witchcraft is a spiritual attack that use unclean spirits to persecute you. No one is born angry. Anger is a spirit that come upon a person who is controlled by that spirit. The same goes for jealousy, envy, death, lust, and countless other spirits. Even light and darkness are spirits. And I separated between light and between darkness, that is to say in the midst of the water, hither and thither, that I said to the light that it should be the day, and to the darkness that it should be the night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And I said, Be open, arches, and let there be born from thee. And he came undone, and age came forth, very great and very dark, bearing the creation of all lower things. And I saw that it was good and said to him, go thou down below and make thyself firm and be for a foundation for the lower things. And it happened. And he went down and fixed himself and became the foundation for the lower things. And below the darkness, there is nothing else. As you heard in the scriptures, the most high, the father command arches, a spirit to be open. Out of the spirit arches came darkness. The Most High made darkness the foundation to the lower places. The Most High said below the darkness is nothing else. As you can see, Israelites, everything the Most High created are living and spirits. The Most High created the visible from the invisible. 
And I bowed down to the Lord, and the Lord spoke to me, Enoch, beloved, all thou seest, all things that are standing finished, I tell to thee, even before the very beginning, all that I created from none being, and visible things from invisible. Hear, Enoch, and take in these my words, for not to my angels have I told my secret, and I have not told them their rise, nor my endless realm, nor have they understood my creating, which I tell thee today. Israelites, it's very important that you understand that everything the Most High created are living and spirits. The reason the Most High made his creation living, that is how his creation can multiply. The Father don't have to recreate any of his creatures. His creatures can multiply. The Most High never had to create man multiple times. The Father created Adam and Eve. Out of Adam and Eve came the indigenous black people that are made in the image of the Most High. The Most High preserved Noah and his family that are descendants of Adam and Eve to repopulate the earth after the flood. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The Father never had to create men and the animals a second time after the flood. That is why he preserved all of his creatures he wanted to exist after the flood. The father destroyed all the creatures that rebelled against him, as well as destroying the creation that came from his rebellious creatures. The other species of mankind is not a creation from the most high. The birth of the other species of mankind came from the imaginations of the rebellious creatures the most high created. Sin and rebellion is the foundation to the other species of mankind. If you observe the other species of mankind, their foundation and history until this day have been violence and destruction. The scriptures did say the children of the watchers were violent. And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon. And they took themselves wives of all whom they choose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. And they begot sons, the Naphidim, and they were all unlike, and they devour one another. And the giants slew the Naphil, and the Naphil slew the Eljo, and the Eljo mankind, and one man another. And every one sold himself to work iniquity, and to shed much blood, and the earth was filled with iniquity. Israelites, now that you know everything the Most High created are alive in a spirit, the Word of God is alive in a spirit as well. That is how the Word became flesh. The Most High said His words are alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. The Word of God is truly a living spirit that is alive and powerful. When you and I speak, we can hear our words, but we can't see them, nor do our words do what we say. When it comes to the Most High, His words are alive and will do everything He sent them to do. His words will never return to Him void. That is why you must know His words and speak His words. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Just as wisdom is a spirit, the word of God is also a living spirit. The scriptures in the book of Hebrews said the word of God is alive, quick, and powerful. If the word of the Most High wasn't alive, there is no way it can be quick, just as the scripture said, in discerning the thoughts and the intents of the heart. In addition, being able to pierce your spirit. The word of God that sits at the right hand of the Father, that is also the mediator between the Most High and men, is very involved in our lives. If you're righteous, then the word of God is with you. The Most High placed him over the best part of mankind. In the beginning, the Most High spoke what he wanted to do. The word of God executed everything the Most High spoke. The Most High the Father said, let there be light, and it was so. The Most High the Father spoke it, and the word of God execute what he said. The word of God in the scriptures before he became flesh was among our people in every generation. 
The scripture said in the book of Psalms that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Most High and deliver them. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. The angel of the Lord is another name for the word of God. We mainly see the title, the angel of the Lord in the scriptures, when the Most High have a message for his people. When the Most High intercede for his people by delivering them, also to assist them in a war. Whenever the word of God comes to intercede, he is often depicted as a man holding a sword. Remember, the sword is symbolic for the word of God. The scriptures in the book of Hebrews said the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. When the word of God becomes the angel of the Lord, he has that sword ready to pierce the soul and spirit. When Joshua was by Jericho, the Most High sent the word of God to him. The word of God at that time appeared to Joshua as the captain to the army of the Most High. The scriptures made sure to describe his appearance and mention the sword in his hand. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho. That he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? There are numerous occasions when the word of God have interceded on our ancestors' behalf as the angel of the Lord with a sword. When the angel of the Lord came to withstood Balaam, Balak, the king of Moab, wanted Balaam to assist him in cursing the Israelites. The Most High was angry with Balaam because he went with the prince of Moab. The word of God appeared as the angel of the Lord to intercede. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord with his sword, Balaam couldn't see the angel of the Lord with the sword until the angel of the Lord opened his eyes. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold! I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. The Most High was angry with Balaam. The Most High sent the word of God, whose purpose is to execute the word of the Most High. The angel of the Lord came to Balaam to be an adversary to him. As you heard in the scriptures, the angel of the Lord said, I would have smite you those three times, but the donkey saw him. Another depiction of the word of God carrying out the will of the most high as the angel of the Lord with the sword in his hands. When King David saw the angel of the Lord standing over Jerusalem with his sword to execute the wrath of the most high on Jerusalem. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. In these instances, we saw the word of God carrying out the will of the Most High as the angel of the Lord before he became flesh. The book of Revelation prophesied of the word of God returning to judge the kings of the earth. The word of God will have a large army from the heavens that will accompany him. The scripture said he was coming with a sword coming out of his mouth to smite the nations. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and green. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Israelites, listen to the scriptures. The book of Revelation said the word of God is the one that will come with the armies of the heavens, clothed in white linen, riding on a horse. The scripture said out of his mouth comes that symbolic sword that will smite the nations. The word of God will rule the nations with a rod of iron. 
The same word of God that appeared in the scriptures as the angel of the Lord with a sword becomes the king of kings and Lord of lords. The scriptures also said he had a name that nobody knew but he himself. The scriptures went on to call him the word of God. To the Israelites that are focused on Joshua ben Joseph, a.k.a. Yahshua, who is prophesied to come in the book of Revelation. Majority of you are very messianic focused and waiting on Yahshua. When you let the scriptures speak, it revealed that the word of God is coming. The scriptures didn't say Joshua ben Joseph or Yahshua, but the word of God. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Israelites, do you see the importance of letting the scriptures speak? Religion have you focus on the Word of God when he was the Messiah. The Messiah came over 2,000 years ago fulfilled his mission, and returned to the Father. The time has come for you to come to terms with the word of God's mission as Yahshua is finished. When he was hung on a tree, he cried to the Father. He said, it is finished. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. The workers of iniquity want you to focus on God in the flesh to deceive you. When the word of God became flesh, he came in the Father's name. The Most High changed his name to Joshua ben Joseph and he obtained a body like ours and fulfilled the job assigned to him. Now that his mission is complete as Yahshua, he's back to his divine nature. Because many of you don't know him as the word of God, you continue to call him Yahshua. Israelites, he's no longer Yahshua. It's prophesied in the scriptures that the word of God's next mission is to come and judge the nations and execute the wrath of the most high. You heard in the book of Revelation, it's the word of God that is riding on the white horse with a sword coming out of his mouth. Religion made you focus on Yahshua to keep you stagnant. If you're constantly looking back, you will never make progress. That is why some Israelites in the awakening had a great spiritual meltdown and throwing all kinds of tantrums when they found out the real identity of Yahshua. A small minority already knew the word of God. The Israelites who loved the God of the heathens wasn't having it. They were offended. Religion had the deceived Israelites waiting on a God that completed his mission over 2000 years ago. The next time the world will see the word of God, he will come in his divine nature as the great prince. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Israelites, at this point, there is no need for the word of God to obtain an earthly body to accomplish the will of the Most High. The flesh body he possessed when he became flesh is no longer needed. He only obtained an earthly body to take our sins to die and enter the gates of hell to take the power that Satan's had over Adam and his seed through death. Now that the word of God have the keys to the kingdom, he no longer needs to come in the flesh as Yahshua. We have the Holy Spirit who the Father hath sent in his name to teach us all things. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Israelites, the word of God before he became flesh is Michael. 
in the apocryphal books that give us information, the workers of iniquity removed from the scriptures in the Bible, you will see how Michael is carrying out the will of the Most High. The Most High, the Father, speak it and Michael fulfill it. You will see in the scriptures of Michael assigning one of his angels to do the will of the Most High. The Most High said to Michael, bind up Simjaza. Michael got up and bind up Simjaza. The Most High said to Michael, take Enoch out of his earthly garments. Michael took Enoch out of his earthly garment. And the Lord said to Michael, go and take Enoch from out his earthly garments and anoint him with my sweet ointment and put him into the garments of my glory. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go, bind Samjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And Michael sent another angel from among the holy ones, and he raised me up. And when he had raised me up, my spirit returned. For I had not been able to endure the look of this host and the commotion and the quaking of the heaven. And Michael said unto me, Why art thou disquieted with such a vision? Until this day lasted, the day of his mercy, and he had been merciful and long-suffering towards those who dwell on the earth. The Most High sent Michael to fight against the prince of Persia that delayed Gabriel for 21 days. Michael went and fought against the prince of Persia. Whatever the Most High speak, Michael, the word of God, and his angels executed. To those of you who need more to believe, go to the Father and ask him if you have a relationship with the Father. I know most of you have a relationship with the God of this world. Now in the awakening is a good time to get to know the Father. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, it was the word of God that was with them, guiding them and telling them everything the Most High wanted to do. It was the word of God that helped Adam pray. It was the word of God that assists Adam and Eve in everything between them and the Most High. If you read the book of Adam and Eve, you will see the word of God stood with all of our fathers, starting with Adam. After they had ended mourning for Noah, an angel of God appeared unto Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, and said unto him in a vision, Knowest thou me? And Canaan answered, No, my Lord. Then the angel said to him, I am the angel whom God has sent unto thee to give thee this commandment and transgress not the command of God. When Canaan heard this from the angel of God, he wondered and said unto him, Speak, O my Lord. And the angel of God said unto him, I am the angel who brought gold to thy father Adam when he was below the garden. I am the angel who prayed to God together with Adam when he offered his blood upon the altar. I am Michael, the angel who received the soul of Abel, the just. I am the angel who was with Seth when he was born in the cave. I am the angel who was with Enos and Canaan and Mahalalel and Jared and Enoch and Methuselah and Lamech and with Noah. Yet since he entered into rest, I stand by his firstborn son, Shem. Michael said to Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, that he stood with all of our fathers. When Adam died, the scripture said the word of God came to Seth and said to him, I will be with you just as I was with your father. And when they had ended their offering, the word of God came to Seth, the eldest among them, saying unto him, O Seth, 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 three times. As I was with thy father, so also shall I be with thee until the fulfillment of the promise I made him thy father, saying, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. But as to thy father Adam, keep thou the commandment he gave thee and sever thy seed from that of Cain thy brother. Then the sun was darkened along with the moon and the stars for seven days. And Seth in his mourning embraced from above the body of his father. And Eve was looking on the ground with hands folded over her head. And all her children wept most bitterly. Michael the angel appeared and stood at the head of Adam and said to Seth, Rise up from the body of your father and come to me and see what is the doom of the Lord God concerning him. His creature is he and God has pitied him. You heard the scripture said the word of God came to Seth and said he would be with him just as he was with his father. 
You also heard the archangel Michael coming to Seth. In the scriptures you heard in the third book of Adam and Eve, Michael speaking with Canaan, the father of Melchizedek, Michael said he stood with Seth. Jared prophesied that the word of God would bury Adam. When the word of God came to help Shem and Melchizedek, it was Michael that helped Melchizedek with the body of Adam. Yet while they were wandering at the door of the ark, the word of God came that said, I am he that made thee priest and that breathed of my spirit unto thee. Thou art my righteous priest and thou art worthy to bear the body of Adam whom I created and unto whom I breathe of my spirit. And I made him priest and a king and a prophet. Go in first and bring out his body. Then Melchizedek went into the ark and bowed in worship to the body of our father Adam. He blessed himself in it and brought it out. The angel Michael helping him the while to carry it. Michael and the word of God are the same. After the death of Adam, Eve guided her children to speak with them when she knew her end was near. She revealed what Michael prophesied to her and Adam when they broke the laws of the Most High. Throughout the scriptures, it said the word of God interacted with Adam and Eve. When Eve gathered her children, she said, Michael. Six days after Adam died, Eve knew that she would die. So she assembled all her sons and daughters, Seth with 30 brothers and 30 sisters. And Eve said to all, hear me, my children, and I will tell you what the archangel Michael said to us when I and your father broke the command of God. On account of your transgression, the Lord will bring on your race the anger of his judgment, first by water, the second time by fire. By these two, the Lord will judge the whole human race. The Most High speak, and the word of God execute the will of the Most High. Michael is there to carry out the will of the Most High. When the word of God interact with our ancestors before he became flesh, he spoke in the first person because he's literally the word of God. When Moses approached the burning bush and the angel of the Lord said to remove his shoes because the place he stand is holy, the angel of the Lord went to speak as if he was the Most High himself. Because the word of God speak as if he is the Father, the synagogue of Satan used this to deceive many into believing the word of God is the father in the flesh. The word of God is Michael and he does the will of the father. The scriptures in the book of Revelation said the word of God will judge the nations and execute the wrath of the most high. At the day of judgment, it's Michael and three other angels that would cast the dragon and all the Satans into the lake of fire. And Michael and Gabriel and Raphael and Phanuel shall take hold of them on that great day and cast them on that day into the burning furnace that the Lord of spirits may take vengeance on them for their unrighteousness in becoming subject to Satan and leading astray those who dwell on the earth. The word of God was present and in interacting with our ancestors before he became flesh. When the Most High sent him into the earth, the word of God became flesh fulfill what was prophesied in the scriptures and laws about him. After his mission was complete, Joshua ben Joseph returned to the father. The scriptures prophesied about the word of God returning in the last days to deliver the Israelites and all the righteous. The righteous that died before the last day, they will rise when he returned. The world is waiting on the return of Yahshua to some Jesus. If you're part of the remnant, you're waiting on the word of God to have a voice of the archangel that will come at the tribulation to deliver the Israelites and all the righteous. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. When it comes to the Most High, he will change your name when he have a significant calling on your life. The word of God will always have a job to do. The scripture said heaven and earth will pass away, but his words will never pass away. Everything the Most High speak, the word of God must do. That is why throughout the scriptures, when he became flesh, he said, I do the will of my father who sent me. He was always about his father's business. Israelites, you have to keep up with the word of God. Don't keep the word of God in one box, Messiah. The word of God is so much more than what religion have convinced you to believe that he is. In the heavens, at the right hand of the Father, is the word of God. He was always the word of God. The scriptures told you the word became flesh. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word of God is no longer flesh. Israelites, let the truth of the scriptures sanctify you. The word of God might go stand with you if you're righteous, the best part of mankind. Israelites, ask the Most High to show you who his beloved son is. Don't allow religion to deceive you about the word of God. The one you're waiting for is the word of God, the great prince with his army. He it is the Most High the Father will send to execute his will on delivering his people. Israelites, that is why it's important that you know what you believe and know what you serve. All of our praises and worship belongs to the Father. Israelites, return to the Father. For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock, save our God. God is my strength and power, and he maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness hath made me great.